Welcome to the Jamestown First Baptist Church Worship Hour. Established in 1930, the First Baptist Church has been instrumental in spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ across the Cumberland Mountains. An aggressive local missions program has assisted in establishing sister churches in Fentress County, the Pickett State Park area, and Morgan County. With programs to minister to the individual and the family, we invite you to join with us in our live worship service. Good morning. morning. It's good to see this uh, happy crowd out this morning. And uh, my, the Lord is blessed today, giving us a wonderful day. And I, I enjoy that sunshine out there, don't you? Amen. Just thank and praise God uh, this morning. Let me make just a couple of announcements. And uh, I don't know if you noticed this morning, but I've got just a little bit of a scratchy throat. And I'll probably preach a little slower today. <laughs> I know there's a ball game at 12, but I'll try to have you out here by 12.30, all right? <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right, let me make a, let me make a couple of announcements. Uh, uh, you should see in the back of your, uh, back of your pew, uh, we're taking up an offering this morning for the uh, North American Mission Board. This is the Annie Armstrong uh, offering. If you'd like to give to that this morning, uh, we'd greatly appreciate that. And uh, also, I would like to send out a call of prayer this morning uh, for Miss Lynette Holbert. I'd like for us to pray for her, uh, pray for her here at this church, as well as uh, pray for her at your home. She's a very sick lady, so please remember Brother Bill and Miss Lynette this morning as we pray. Let's go ahead and go to God in prayer this morning, and then we'll uh, turn it over to Brother Bill to read some scripture this morning. Father, we just come to you this morning. We thank you and praise you, God, for the day that you've given us. We, we thank you, Father, for the life that you've brought to each one of us, God, through your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And We ask you, God, that you would just uh, bless in the service today. We pray, Father, that we would lift your name up in this place this morning. And Father, I ask you, God, that you'd be with Miss Lynette Hobart this morning. I pray, Father, that you'd be with her and Brother Bill Pray, God, that you'd just bless them, and we know, God, she's in great hands. We just ask you, Lord, that you would just take care of her, dear Lord, we pray. Bless this service today. May everything that we do today bring glory to your precious name. For this we ask in your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. This morning's scripture will be from Matthew, Matthew 22, uh, I'm sorry, Matthew 14, verse 22 through 27. Immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side. And while he sent the multitude away, and when he had sent the multitude away, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. Now when evening came, he was alone there. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. For now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them, walking on the sea. And, we, and when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, be of good cheer, it is I. Do not be afraid. The men come forward, please. <clears throat> Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for this day that you've given and we for the many blessings that you've bestowed. And dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this church family. 
And we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Now, dear and Father, I ask that you be with those that are in the hospital, nursing homes, and need you in a special way. Now, dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you bless the gift and the giver for the ongoing of your work and forgive us where we might fail thee. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 everybody good morning can you hear me I can talk loud as you probably figured it out I'm not Gary but I am his middle daughter so if you join me in worship this morning please stand to your feet we're gonna sing about how great God is
turn around and greet somebody this morning. treat for you guys. We're going to play a little video. This is a song that my husband and I wrote with a friend, and it is a song that kind of tells Anthony's testimony about how we can't just go on our parents' religion and faith. We have to find out for ourselves who God is, each and every one of us. So check this out. Addictions game, friends are 
Lord will do If he can change me all oh, he can change you I can't imagine all his pain When he took my baggage and didn't complain I learned about forgiveness At 29 years old I needed someone to help me But I just didn't know And he did If he can change me, he can change you. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? All right, well, let's sing some more. Everybody stand back up. Let's praise the Lord. You give life.
you hear me? All right, there we are. You guys sounded good this morning. I appreciate the choir helping me up out this morning. Thank you. <laughs> they always help me on how you guys sing these songs, so I just listen to them real good. So, sounds good. All right, this song I'm going to sing is a song that just ministered to me the first time I heard about it, and I heard it, and it's just called The Faithful Love of Jesus. There are arms that we can lean into that always will receive us. And in this love of living truth, the faithful love of Jesus. Amen. Well, I've got some good news for you. After I made that announcement about 1230, somebody brought me a cough drop, okay? <laughs> so, you're, so you're back in luck, all right? Well, I enjoyed those songs this morning, didn't you? Amen. That song, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of... The I am a child of God. I am a child of God. Wow. You may not feel like you're much, but I want to tell you this morning you cost a lot. If you're a child of God this morning, you're expensive. You're expensive. Thank you, Miss Leanne, for those songs this morning. Uh, 
Are you glad you're here today? Uh, you know, I may be a little different than most preachers, but you know what? We're all a little different, aren't we? It'd be a boring world if we was all the same, wouldn't it? We'd all done the same thing and acted the same way. What well, just that'd be dull, wouldn't it? But you know that God's never made not two people the same. That's amazing, isn't it? It's amazing that a that a man's hand, my hand is different than anybody else's in the world. A different handprint than you do. Isn't it amazing how you'd think that God mess up at least once, wouldn't you? <laughs> and to believe that we was that we just come into existence by a big bang. Uh, you'd, you'd have to have a lot of faith to believe that. You'd have to have more faith to believe that than to believe what I believe. Did you know that? Boy, I, I'm glad Jesus loves me, aren't you? Amen. As Billy Graham said one time, my favorite song, he said, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible has told me so. I'm glad he loves me today. I want us to look together in this passage again this morning. A very familiar passage. I, I couldn't tell you how many times I've preached from these same verses that we're going to be reading from this morning. Uh, I'm going to look at them just a little bit different here this morning. Let's look at them together here again this morning. And I want to read down through verse 33 this morning. Begin in verse 22. Straightway, Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him to the other side while, the other, while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitude away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with the waves of the wind, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is, it is a spirit. They cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and called him and, and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were coming to the ship, the wind ceased. Then the, they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. Father, we thank you this morning. We just praise your holy name. We thank you, Father, for the presence of the unseen guest. We thank you, Father, for the presence of the Holy Spirit today. And we ask you, Lord, that you would just make yourself known among us here this morning. God, may we lift you up in this place today that you would receive glory and honor. That you would receive praise, God, even as we proclaim your glorious gospel. Father, we thank you today. We count it a great privilege, we count it a great honor, God, just to stand before this group of people, God, and speak your word. Help your servant now. Forgive us where we failed you, God. This we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. I want to preach to you this morning on His presence. His presence. You know, if there's, if we ever need the presence of anyone, it's His presence. We need the presence of God. 
But I noticed here in this passage that I read before you, talking about the, the presence of God, sometimes the presence of God, there is problems in His presence. You know that you can be right in the, in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ and still have problems. You can still have problems even in His presence. I, I'm, I'm thankful that the Bible says in Hebrews 11, 13, 5, He says, I will never leave thee, nor will I ever forsake thee. But you know what? You can still have problems in the presence of God. We're not immune to having problems. We ever one have problems, don't we? If you don't think that you have problems, or the other person don't have problems, it's more just to ask them. They'll be glad to tell you that they do. I want to tell you this morning, you can have problems this morning and, and be right in the presence of God. I notice here in verse, 20, verse 27, the Bible says, But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, He says, Be of good cheer, he says, be not afraid. Do you think these disciples felt like they were having problems? They, Jesus said, it's, it's, it's me. He said, be not afraid. Let's notice what he says in verse 26. Back up our one verse. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, the Bible says that they were what? Troubled. They had problems. They, the Bible says that they were troubled. They were saying among themselves, it is a spirit. And they, they cried out for fear. Even in the very presence of God, sometimes it can be fearful. Just ask these disciples that day. You, you know what? A lot of times the, the problems and the troubles that we have in the church this morning as well as homes today is because that we don't recognize the presence of God. We don't see that, that God's presence is, is right there with us. They didn't know who He was. They thought it was a, a spirit. And the Bible says that they cried out for fear. I wonder how many times God shows up and we don't even know He's here. I wonder how many times that God shows up in our lives that we don't even recognize who He is. I want to tell you this morning, He's always present. He's always present even in troubles. Aren't you glad of that? I mean, if I was out on the, if I was out on the, on the sea and a, and a terrible storm come, I'd want Jesus to be there with me, wouldn't you? I want to tell you this morning that He's with you even in the troubles, but His presence sometimes brings trouble. His presence brought trouble to them. They were in fear. The Bible says that they were troubled. I want to tell you this morning, I don't care how close you live to God, You'll be troubled sometimes. You're not immune to it. The good thing about it is He's going to be with you through it. He's going to be right there with you through those troubles. Did, did God take them out of the trouble? He didn't, did He? They were troubled. The Bible says they were troubled. It, I believe that if these disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ that live closer to Him than we do, amen? I want to tell you, they live closer to Him than we do. Now, you may think that you live closer to the Lord than they did. You don't. But I want to tell you this morning that the Bible says in verse 26 that they were troubled. They were troubled. Troubled where? In His presence. In His presence. I want to tell you sometimes just being in His presence brings trouble. You could ask them. You could ask any of these disciples. You could ask any of the, of the apostles. And they would tell you following the Lord Jesus Christ sometimes brings trouble. We don't like trouble, do we? I'd rather stay away from it, wouldn't you? But you know what trouble will do? It'll track you down. It'll find you. You could be all by yourself and you'd still be in trouble. 
But I want to tell you this morning, Jesus said, I'm going to be with you in these troubles. He was right there. Can I get a witness to that? He was there. Even in his presence, we see the problem of his presence. They were in trouble. But not only that, but we say we see there in verse 27 the proof of his presence. The proof of his presence. Jesus said clearly to those disciples, Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. You know, it's kind of odd, that verse. Jesus, he didn't say, Be of good cheer. It is Jesus. Be not afraid. But he didn't say that. He says to his disciples, be of good cheer. He said, it is I. Be not afraid. You say, what do you mean, preacher? They knew his voice. They'd heard that voice before. They recognized his voice. We see in this passage that Jesus didn't have to say, hey boys, it's me, Jesus. Don't worry about it. But he said, be of good cheer, it is, it's I. Don't, don't you like that? Do you know what I'm reminded in the, the Bible says that my sheep hear my voice and they follow me and a stranger they'll not follow? I want to tell you they recognize the voice of Jesus when he says I. Do you know him when he says it's me? Does, or does he have to say it's me, Jesus? He don't have to do that, does he? I, I hear his voice, don't you? I can, I, can, I, can, I can identify a counterfeit from a mile off, can't you? Jesus said, it's me. It's I. Do you like that this morning? He said, it's me. He said, it's I. He says, don't be afraid. Well, it's easy for him to say that, isn't it? He's God. Be not afraid. It's I. Do you ever get afraid? Do you ever get in a place in your life that you get afraid? And you need proof that he's in your presence? Oh, I, I want him to be there, don't you? If I was these guys, I would be just like them, and you would too. You'd be scared out of your wits. But Jesus, just that sweet voice... Hey guys, be not afraid. It's, it's I. It's me. Do you understand? Do you understand that he don't have to tell us who he is? We know who he is. They knew who Jesus was just by the, the sound of his voice. And a lot of times we don't recognize the voice of God just because we don't hear his voice. How, how do we hear the voice of God? How do we get to a place that we hear the voice of God? Did you know that God speaks through His Word? Can I get a witness there? That, do you know that God speaks through His Word? And the clearer that we hear the voice of God, the, the more that we grow closer to God is the more that we spend time in the Word of God. Amen. God uses His Word that we can hear His voice. He's, they knew who He was. They, they'd heard that voice many times before. And especially right now, they wanted to hear him say, It is I, be not afraid. It's me, guys. Don't worry about it. It's me. We see the problem of his presence in verse 26. We see the proof of his presence in verse 27. But not only that, I see in verse 28, I see the permission, the permission of his presence. Notice what, what Peter said. Peter answered him and said, Lord, he still had a doubt. If it be thou, if it's really you, Lord, if you're really who you say that you are, bid me to come to thee on the water. 
Do you know what? Sometimes that God permits us to do things even when we doubt it. He says, Lord, if it's you, he's, he's questioning the Lord. If it's really you, Lord, he says, let me walk on that water. If I want to get out of that boat and walk on the water, I want to make sure it's him, don't you? <laughs> Lord, if it's, if it's really you, if it's really you, Lord, he knew it was. Did you know that? He knew his voice. He knew the voice of God. I want to tell you this morning that sometimes that we have to ask for permission for his presence. Permission, we find here, the permission of his presence. In verse 28, Lord, if it be thou. You know what? It's, it's all right to ask for permission. Did you know that? Sometimes it's, we just need that assurance, don't we? Sometimes we just need the assurance that, that God really wants us to be able to do that. And we ask Him, have you ever asked God for permission more than one time for something specific? Or do you just ask one time and, and there you go? No. A lot of times we, we want to make sure that that's what God wants us to do. So we ask Him again. We ask Him, Lord, if it's if this is really what you want me to do, just show me something different. Show me a sign. You know what? A lot of people were, were all caught up in, in signs. But you know what? God, a lot of times, He don't show us signs. He just shows us His Word. And you know what? You have to rely on His Word above a sign. Amen. Yeah. God, the majority of the time, Speaks through His Word. He does. And I want to tell you this morning, God will never lead you contrary to His Word. You say, well, preacher, you did, man, I just had this feeling, this, great, this feeling come over me, and I felt like that's what God wanted me to do. But it's not in the Bible, preacher. But I, this is what God wants me to do. You better junk it. Did you hear me? You better junk that idea. That's not of God. If it's not in this Bible, it's not of God. Can I get a witness there? A lot of times we want to do things our way. We want to go with our scheme and our plan. And it's contrary to what God tells us in His Word. It won't work. I want to tell you this morning, it won't work. It wouldn't have worked for these disciples. It won't work for you. It won't work. We just got to take God at His word. We see here that they ask for permission of His presence. But not only that, but I see here in verse, verse number 30, I find the power of His presence. The power of His presence. Did you notice what Peter said? Three words. Lord, save me. You know what? You know when Peter cried those words out? It was when he was going under. He wasn't waiting until he was a drowning. He wasn't waiting until he was gasping for air. He wasn't waiting until he got all the way under the water. But I believe as, the, as he realized that the water was coming above his ankles... Then just a few minutes, it was about his knees. Then just a thought, it was probably at his thigh. And just a, a split second, it was at his waistline. And he says, Lord, save me. Don't wait until you're completely drowned until you call on God. Don't wait until you're completely under and ask for God's help. He, he wants to save you now. He don't want to wait till you're gasping for air. He says here, Lord, save me. Let's say that together. Lord, save me. Say it again. Now, everybody wasn't participating, all right? 
Some of you older folks wake up, all right? Here we go. Lord, save me. Aren't you glad he did? He saved you. Peter said, Lord, save me. Notice something else there. Jesus says one word. He don't have to say a big long paragraph or a bunch of sentences that runs together. Jesus says only one word. One, th one word, that's all he says. You know what it is? Come. Come. He gives just that one little word, that, that word, come. That's all Peter had to hear. Come. If I went a Baptist, I'd shout this morning. He said, come. But the Bible says that Peter began to, to see the wind. He began to, he, the Bible says that he, that he heard the wind. I want to tell you, when Jesus says for you to come, a lot of times if you're not real careful, you'll start listening to the wind and you'll go another direction. When, Jesus, when Peter took his eyes off of Jesus, when he said come and started looking around at the waves, the Bible says the end, that's when he began to sink. But long as we're listening to the voice of come, come. I want to tell you this morning, that's what he's still saying to us. Come. Just one word. Are, are you going to come this morning? Are you going to come in his presence this morning? Jesus says come. Are you glad you come? Amen. Are you, are you thrilled and excited that you come? Just had to obey that one word. Come. But if you're not real careful, you'll start looking at everything else around you and you'll get distracted. And you'll quit listening to that one little word that he spoke to Peter. Come. I remember sitting back about where Donnie showed is in the, in the church and I heard Jesus say, come. Come. And I, and I started hearing all other kinds of voices and it was just like the, it was like the wind. And that voice was saying, stay. Stay. You got plenty of time, just stay. But Jesus, he kept calling, he said, Come. Come, it's, it is I. Be not afraid. It's me. Come. Do you remember when you responded to that word? Come. Jesus said, don't be afraid. I want to tell you this morning, you come to, the, you come to Jesus, you hear that word come, you don't, you don't have nothing to lose. That's right. But you have everything to gain. Amen. You have everything to gain. We find here the, the power of His presence. But not only that, but I see in verse 33. In verse 33, I see the, the praise. The praise of His presence. Notice what the Bible says there in verse 33. We see the praise of His presence. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him and said of a truth, Thou art the Son of God. The Bible says that those that were in the ship came and worshipped him and said of a truth, Thou art the Son of God. My what praise of His presence. You know when when God hits a home run, we ought to shout. We shout when everybody else hits a home run. We shout when everybody else scores a touchdown, don't we? Why don't we why don't we praise God when He scores a touchdown? 
Why don't we praise God when He knocks a grand slam? <coughs> if anybody deserves praise, it's Him. Amen. Has He knocked a home run in your life? Why don't you praise Him? The Bible says that those that were in the ship, they, they worshipped Him. I want to tell you this morning, you can't be quiet and worship Him. Are you, are you this quiet when you go to the ball game? I've got one more message. I'm going to preach. Are we this quiet when we go to the game? Well, certainly we're not. If I went to a game tonight with this little scratchy throat that I have, before I left, it would be where I couldn't even talk hardly. I'd be hollering and hooping and hollering so much. Wouldn't we? We get excited, don't we? We get excited when our team scores, do we not? Amen. I want to tell you, we need to get excited because our team has scored. Amen. We ought to worship Him. The people in that boat, when they saw what happened in His presence, the Bible says they worshiped Him. You say, what did they do? I don't know, but they worshipped him. That's what they said. They worshipped him. Worshiping God will exalt his name. You can't worship him without exalting his name. That's what they done. They exalted this man named Jesus. They did. You think we need to do that? You may be here this morning and maybe you don't know Jesus as your Savior. I went for 19 years and I didn't know Him. Some of you went a lot longer than that and you didn't know Him. But I want to tell you this morning, you can know Him if you want to. He, he never died for just an elect few. The Bible says that He died for the whole world. John 3.16 He loved the whole world. Gave his life for the whole world. Everybody. Every single soul he gave his life for. If you're here this morning and you don't know him, he died for you. And he wants to change your life this morning, right now. If I had, any, if I had it to do over again, I'm glad I got saved last night, team, but if I had it to do over again, I got saved at a much earlier age when God first spoke to me. But I did. But hallelujah, I'm saved. Hallelujah, you're saved. I want you to, I want us to stand together this morning. I want to get Miss Leanne to come to the piano this morning. You, and you may be here in, in this building this morning. And I don't know... Why you think that you might be here, but if you're here and you're lost, I want to tell you why you're here. God sent you here. He sent you here. He sent you to this place this morning for this particular time in your life that you could accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. I want to tell you on the authority of the Word of God and what God has done in my life as well as in the lives of others. It's the greatest thing that ever happened to me. Greatest thing. I've got a wonderful wife. We've been married for 20, almost 25 years. Got nine children that I love dearly. But that don't even compare to the love that God has for me and has for you. God, He wants to change your life. And it's going to take Him to do it. Say, preacher, how do, you, how do you do that? How does a person's life get changed? Just acknowledge before God that you're a, that you're a lost sinner. And Jesus Christ is, the, is your only escape. And just come and repent of your sins and ask the Lord Jesus Christ to come to your heart and save you. And I want to tell you when, you, mean, when you mean that from your heart, it'll happen just like that. That fast. That fast. You'll, the Bible says in... 
in 1 Corinthians 5, 17, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. It'll happen just that quick. It will. We're going to give an invitation this morning. If you're here this morning and you're lost, and I'm not going to drag the invitation along, but if you're here and you're lost this morning, as we start singing, I want you to come. Just as we start singing, Miss Leanne, I want you all to come. Y'all pray right now, for those that are here lost, that they come right now as we start singing. Right now, come right on as we sing. Oh, to Jesus, I surrender all to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust. Leanne for that leading us this morning in worship. Thank you this morning, church, and uh, pray for pray for our services. Did you hear me? Pray for our services. Please pray for Miss Lynette today. Uh, hold her up in prayer today. Uh, her and Brother Bill Holbert. Please pray for them. And. Uh, Pray for Brother Willie Waters. He'll be a speaking tonight, uh, one of our deacons. Pray for him. Try to come back and support him. Uh, pray for me and me and Brother Mark Cope. We'll be a traveling to uh, Warsaw, North Carolina, about a 10-hour drive. Pray for us today. Uh, the Lord bring us back safe, as well as the Gene and the other team that's already there. We're on their way there. Pray for them. All right, let's go ahead and pray. We'll be dismissed this morning. And... Uh, if you're here this morning as a visitor, I, uh, if I overlooked you, I'm sorry. I, I appreciate you being here. I mean that. I'm glad that you're here today. And, uh, and we want you to come back. We want you to be part of this church. And if you like the way we uh, do things here, uh, maybe God, that's where God wants you to stay. And so uh, I'll leave that between you and the Lord. Brother Joe Pyle, would you dismiss us, brother, in a word of prayer? Father, we come before thee today. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings you've given each other, Lord. Thank you for your church here that you provided to us worship thee. We thank for everyone here today. And Lord, we ask blessings on each one that's here. Lord, be with each one. I don't know you, Lord. We ask you to be in their heart, Lord, to help them understand that they need Jesus in their heart. Again, Father, we thank you. We ask you to be with all these been men sick, Lord. Just you and Bill and Lynette, Lord, just be with them and others, Lord, that's not been mentioned. 